Let's say I'm building a Rails blog application and I want to make this a little bit more of a useful resource and integrate some other sites into this blog. So on the right side here I want to list uh, some other Rails resources. So maybe a list of the most recent Railscast episodes on the right side here. Now if we go to railscast.com we can see the most recent episodes here. But how do we integrate this and pull this into our application? Well we could do some screen scraping which means we grab the HTML contents of this page and do some parsing. Or a much better way if it's available is to use an RSS feed. So here I have the Railscast episodes in RSS. So why don't we just pull the RSS and then extract that information uh, from there. Now there are many different ways to parse an RSS feed in Ruby, but one of the best ways I think is using FeedZera. I hope I got that pronunciation right. Anyway, this is a gem you can install, and one of the reasons why it's the best is because it uh, is the fastest by far at parsing RSS feeds, and it has many features, including uh, support for many different types of feeds. So to install it, just follow the instructions here, uh, add GitHub to the gem source if you haven't already, and then just run this command. So let's just do that here, installing that, and it will have several different dependencies it'll install too. And we'll also need to include this gem in our Rails application, so go to the environment.rb file and then just add this line in there to load the gem. So now what's the next step? Well, we want to pull the feed, parse it, and then display the most recent episodes on the right here. But we don't want to just do that in the request of the user because it's an expensive operation, it takes some time, and we don't want to hit that external feed every single time the user visits our website. We want to cache this locally so we don't have to uh, pull and parse the feed every single time. But there are various ways to do the caching, and because this is going to be like a core feature of this application, I'm going to handle the caching in the database and actually create a new model for each of the entries in the feed. So we can just generate a model here called, uh, we'll just call a feed entry, and we'll give it a name which will be the title of the entry, a uh, summary, some text content, uh, the URL, which will be a string, the published at date, um, and let's also add the GUID in there as well. That stands for Global Unique Identifier, which is just a way to uniquely identify a given feed entry uh, so we can check for duplicates. Then we could just migrate to the database to add that table. So here we have our feed entry model, and this is where I want to put all the logic for parsing the feed and adding new entries. So to save us a bit of typing and time, I'll just paste some code into here. But it's really quite simple. So here we have a class method which we can call and pass in a feed URL. And so this will basically add any entries which aren't already in the database at this feed URL. So we use feed0 to fetch and parse the feed. And then we just call feed.entries to uh, create a new entry for each of them. But we only want to create it if it doesn't already exist. So we first see if a feed entry exists. So this is an active record exists call. Uh, see if it, the GUID is already exists for the entries ID. And there we go. So here we are just creating entries which don't already exist in our database whenever we call this method uh, and pass a feed URL to it. So let's try this out. Let me just grab this RSS feed. And in our console, let's try calling that feed entry class method, update from feed, and then just pass in that URL. And this just takes a few seconds because it's fetching the feed and then parsing it. But then once it's done, we should have uh, records in our uh, database for each of the separate feeds. And even if we tried running the same method again, it would only add the new entries which have been added since we last ran it. So what we might want to do is set up a cron job to hit that line of code uh, on a recurring basis. And if you want to do that, I highly recommend using the whenever gem for handling the cron job like I show in episode 164. And now that we have our feed entries in the database, it's very easy to just add a bit of code into our view to 
uh, loop through all the feed entries. We'll actually just take the most 10 most recent entries and then just display a link to the entry URL. And then just reload the page here, and there we go. There's our 10 most recent Railscast episodes fetched through an RSS feed. Now the technique I've shown you in this episode works pretty well in cases where you don't need to check for updates of the feed very frequently. So I might just check for updates every one or two hours uh, in this case. So it works pretty well. But if you're having to do a more frequent basis and check for updates every five or 10 minutes just to make sure you stay in sync with the feed, then the technique I've shown you kind of breaks down and isn't the most efficient. See, the problem is, is if we are hitting this update from feed method every 10 minutes or so, then we're having to download and parse the entire feed every single time. And most likely it hasn't changed since the last time we've done this. So we're wasting a lot of bandwidth and resources in times we don't really need to. And thankfully, FeedZero provides a better solution for this. Now if we take a look at FeedZero's readme, we can see we have an update method we can call and pass in the feed object to. Uh, this will only update the feed if it has changed. And it just uses something called etags to check if the feed has changed. And then if it has, it redownloads it and reparses it. But if it hasn't, which is most likely the case if you're doing it frequently, then it uh, doesn't bother doing that expensive resource call. And we also get this new entries method, which we can use to only uh, return the entries which have been added since then uh, and add those entries into our database. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this update method working in my testing. Uh, it may just be something wrong with my specific setup, or if it's a bug, I expect it'll be uh, fixed pretty quickly. So I'll, I'll still show you how this would work in theory, assuming you can get this update method working. So what I want to do is provide an alternative to this update from feed method, because, well, this is really designed to be triggered from a cron task every so often. But instead, if we're updating our feed very frequently, we want to have more of a demonized process, which always stays open and just pulls the feed uh, every few minutes, maybe. And that way, the feed can stay in memory, and we could just do that update call through uh, feed zero. Now, this part of the feed will be similar in both techniques, so I'm just going to first extract this into its own method. Uh, let's just call it add entries. And then, so up here, we'll just uh, call add entries and then pass in the feeds entries. And then our alternative technique, which is somewhat similar, will be more of a demonized process which loops continuously. So let's rename this to update from feed continuously. And then we'll have a feed URL and let's add another uh, parameter in here called delay interval. Let's default to 15 minutes, how about? And then, so what we want to do is fetch the feed and add the entries as usual, but we also want to do a loop, which will loop endlessly. We'll sleep for the delay interval. Then we want to update the feed. So we'll just call uh, update on here, pass in the feed. So it'll update it, and then we'll just check uh, add the entries of new entries if the feed's been updated. So that way, uh, during this loop for each every 15 minutes, we just check the feed for what has changed. If it has changed, then we add the new entries. Now I know that was a lot of code to go through, but hopefully you were able to follow along okay. Really the gist of it and important part is that there's two different techniques for updating a feed. Uh, one is that you can trigger from a cron task of some kind. This works great if you need to update the feed on an infrequent basis every uh, couple hours or so maybe. The other one works well if you need to update the feed very frequently every five or 10 minutes uh, so that this one is basically an endless loop which stays open and just checks the feed constantly and it only downloads and parses a feed if there have been updates so it's much more performance efficient. One final note here is that this loop is probably not the best way to do 
your own demonized process. Instead, you can use the demon gem like I show in episode 129, but it's a little bit too much to go into this episode. So here I'm really mostly showing the concept of how uh, you would update a feed continuously. Sponsored in part by RubyMine, a Rails IDE from JetBrains. It provides smart code completion, Rails refactorings, version control integration, and more. For a free 30-day trial, visit jetbrains.com ruby. Also sponsored by Pragmatic Screencasts. They offer high-quality screencasts on a variety of subjects, including Ruby and Rails. Check them out at pragmatic.tv.